My name is Benjamin Ariola, and um, first name, um, you spell it B-E-N-J-A-M-I-N, that's Benjamin. The last name's Ariola, is A-R-R-I-O-L-A. Hmm. What is the ethnic origin of last name, Ariola? Actually, Ariola starts, um, in, it actually it started in Spain, which means um, a rock quarry, and that's where it started. I, I got that information. Mm -hmm. Tell, when were you born, and where were you born? I was born here in El Paso, and back in October the 10th, 1934. And tell me about your family. Oh, yes. Uh, we, um, we were a small family. It was my dad, my mom, and three children. I was the youngest. Um, what it was is that um, uh, my dad took off to Mexico and with another woman, with another family. Uh, the responsibility felt m mostly on my mother because uh, she uh, did, was unemployed, and she had to go back and find a job, which she did, and raise three children. And... Uh, and we lived in a very poor, naturally, a very poor um, side of, of, well, very, very poor part of the city. And uh, was, that's where, that's the only thing we could afford. And, uh, but she did. Uh, she raised us up. Uh, she, well, first of all, she raised all three of us, put us to school, anyway, grammar school. But my older brother, Fernando, uh, what happened is that he found that for him to go out and work, construction, and uh, whatever it was, it was very hard on him. So he said, you know, Mom, I would like to join the Army. And that's, he volunteered the Army, and uh, he joined back in 1948. 1948? Mm-hmm. So what happened to him? Well, what happened is that uh, first he went through training in mm -hmm. California, then the uh, that was back in 48, 49, and then uh, he was stationed in Japan. He, they shipped him up to Japan, and then there, uh, <clears throat> while he was training, the Korean War broke out, and uh, he, uh, he was with the uh, 7th Division, 32nd Infantry Regiment, mm -hmm. Company A, and um, he... Uh, the, actually, they, he, they, he was involved with others in uh, the landing in, um, in Enchon. The, uh, the Enchon landing was a, a strategy by MacArthur to actually cut the uh, North Koreans. Yeah. And he was in, in, involved in that particular landing. Right after that, they moved him all the way from around the peninsula and... Uh, and he <clears throat> landed on the other side, which was the east side, and I think it's Wonsang. Mm. And from there, they actually moved straight north up to the Chosen Reservoir. Mm -hmm. There at the Chosen Reservoir, well, at, uh, well, they stopped at the right next, I'll say, they stopped at the Yellow River. And MacArthur said, we're not going any further. We're going to stay here. And uh, there was a discussion. Uh, I'm sure there was a uh, strategy involved there <coughs> of just staying there. And uh, in all this time, the Chinese were thinking of uh, invading or coming down. Consequently, they came down in big numbers, and he was lost. He was MIA. He was still MIA. So in Zhang, he was lost in Jiangxin battle. In, in the chosen battle, yes. When were you notified as MIA about your brother? Well, we your brother's name is Fernando. Fernando. F E R N A N D O. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. When were you notified about your brother? Well, I would. Um, I don't remember because I was 14, 14 years of age. But I was 1950. I would think that he was notified. Um, hmm. Let's see, I, I would say in 1952, mm. because by then the war was going, and I think my mother received a telegram that was missing in action. Do you still have that telegram? I do not. I, um, I, but the only correspondence that I do have, I didn't bring it with me, is about the, uh, his commander that he, 
he apologized. He's not apologized, but informed my mother that he had been lost. So you still have that correspondence? I, yes, I think I do. Okay. I'll have to, I have to, to check on that, mm -hmm. but not the telegram. I don't know what she did with the telegram, but my mother's dead now. My sister is also dead, and I'm the only survivor. So, so when what school did you go through? You go through when? What school did you go through? Well, <clears throat> we lived on the poor side of, uh, I would say, of the, the city, and there was a grammar school, mm -hmm. Franklin School grammar school, and uh, I attended there up to the, the sixth grade, and from there, uh, I went to junior high, which was Bowie High School, mm -hmm. okay? and then I, I was there from seventh, eighth, till I graduated in 1952. What high school? This is Bowie High School. B-O-W-I-E okay. High School. High school. In 1952? Ni May of 1952. Okay. What happened to you then? Well, as, after I then, I, <coughs> after I graduated, I, I looked for a job and I worked at the service station. From there on, and then I applied for El Paso, for El Paso Natural Gas Company, and, uh, and I worked there for 33 years. And I, uh, and I was a printing supervisor, mostly my Responsibility was a bindery, which I became a bindery supervisor, and I worked there for 33 years, and I retired. Mm -hmm. And presently, I'm. Did you ever join the military? I did not, and the reason is this: since there was only three of us in the family, yeah. with two children, and uh, I went to the uh, uh, registration, and he said, uh, and I told him that I was the only. My dad had left, my brother had left. I was the only survivor, and I was helping my mother. Uh, support and they gave me a 4A. I was classified as a 4A. 4? Four, 4A. Four A mm -hmm. means? Which is zero. That's um, a deferment. That means that uh, you don't have to uh, to actually report right. unless they need to. So you told me that you have some pictures of yes. your brother, right? Still yes. Right? The first one, that's my brother, Fernando. He's the, the one that um, served in Korea and is missing in action. Second to him is my sister, Lucy, who she passed away 10 years ago. And then that's me, <coughs> the youngest one on the very end. And uh, I'll tell you, that's a few years ago. But then uh, that's the only picture we have uh, that I have of, of three of us. Mm. Beautiful family, huh? Oh, thank you. Fernando, you. Uh, no, Fernando, Lucy. Lucy and, and Ben. Ben. And ben. Mm. Beautiful. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, very handsome mm -hmm. and very pretty. Well, thank you. I, uh, I, I would tell you that uh, my grandfather uh, was from Germany, and uh, there she, I would say, he passed the genes over to my mother, mm -hmm. which is half German, and we have some German blood in us. Maybe that's uh, the difference. Okay. Plus, we have Indian blood from my father from Mexico. Send, show me another picture. This is um, Fernando, um, and this is El Paso, Texas. When he was born, U.S. Army Corporal, missing in action, presumed dead, December the second, mm. 1950. And this is uh, uh, the uh, the <coughs> the company he served for, Company A, 32nd Infantry, uh, which I mentioned also in the finding the enemy in North Korea, December the second, and he was presumed then. De dead December the 31st. Now, under here, it says the awards, the Purple Heart, the Combat Infantry Badge, the Korean Service, the United States Nation uh, Service Medal, and the, and the National Defense Service Medal. I have received, um, I would say, a certificate. The United States of America honors the memory of Fernando Riola, and this certified that he was a grateful you know, for a grateful nation and the armed service. It was actually sent to me by Lyndon Johnson. And then also, in memory of Fernando Rilla, same thing, who died in a military operation in Korea. On this particular one, it's Eisenhower, General Eisenhower. But then he was president. Now, also, I have uh, certificates of uh, the Pearl Harbor, let me see if I can, which she was given. Uh, was he 
also in the World War II? No, he was not. But this, actually, this certificate and the medal, I received it afterwards. Okay. Tell me about it. Well, see, I imagine that when you're missing in action, well, he was in action for sure, and he probably got in, um, wounded, and uh, there's no record of that, but the government went ahead and sent me, or other family, the Purple Heart, which I do have it there at the house. And then uh, I, I was, you know, I was received this back in 1954 that the president requested I inform you of the Purple Heart. And that was it. Not only that, but I have received correspondence from the, um, from the, uh, from Korea. And, uh, and on this particular one, the president of the republic then, Kim Dae Jung, he has sent us these, uh, both in English and in, in, uh, Korean. in Korean, for sure. Then also, uh, I received other uh, certificates from the Korean government, and this one's from uh, the retired general, Koi uh, Su Wu, our Korean. Uh. Now, which I have, um, which is very interesting to me anyway, is that every year I do get I'm sure others do receive, but what I hold here in my hand is actually Christmas cards given, actually sent to me by Bill Clinton, our president. Uh, oops, there we go. And, and this one's, uh, the latest one's uh, Hillary, Henry, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, all of these stuff. And um, this one's the latest one. I received a Christmas from uh, Barack Obama, or President Obama. What I have here is a picture of my brother. Uh, that was the, he took this picture just before he, he returned to El Paso where we live. This is a picture of him uh, uh, in the barracks where he lived. And this is a, a card signifying that he was a Catholic. Okay. And it was active in the camp. How did you get that picture? Um, this one here? No. The this one? No. This one? Yeah, I think this was sent by, uh, by a friend of his. And he also, uh, before he went to Japan, he was sending pictures, a picture of himself and his friends uh, to us. And, and this is another picture of him. And this is uh, one of his friends, Joe, that... Uh, that was there with him at the barracks that was in training. This is him over here. You can see it when he was involved in sports and uh, he used to run the high hurdle. This is a ship, the USS Patrick, that, that actually took him to Japan, that they shipped out of Seattle to Japan. Uh, and these are friends of his. And as you can see, they love to take pictures there's a company, well, let's see, the, um, uh, the, whole, the company that he, that he was in, that he belonged to. And uh, let me see if I got another one. Yeah. This picture over here is the company that he belonged to. This is the 32nd Company A, and he's there somewhere. He had more pictures of his friends right there. Okay, my brother, while he was in the army, he actually was a boxer, and some, I think it was during when they were shipping out, um, they were moving, say, when they were in the ship and going to Japan, he got in a bout, and they knocked the teeth, one of his, um, one of his teeth, the, the, the canine tooth was, um, was actually, he lost his canine tooth, and when they declare him missing in action, they send back the cameras, they send back, um, uh, pictures and correspondence, and they send me his canine tooth. And what I've done with this is that I have actually given it to the Defense Department in Hawaii, and they have actually removed some of the DNA, and they have it recorded. And if they do ever find it, it's the remain, and it will be the the evidence, the evidence for matching DNA. DNA, exactly. So that's about it. But then lately, the reason I 
I know more about the chosen reservoir because I have this book that I've read it a couple of times, and it tells me just what really happened and uh, at the chosen reservoir, the, the uh, different chapters, and I've underlined several things that have happened there that were, they were very, hmm, very hard, I would say hurtful. One was the weather that they suffered. Why don't you read it? Okay, actually east of the chosen, and it's actually the, uh, written by Roy um, Appleman. Appleman, yeah. And what happened is this, this man did a lot of research on the chosen. He actually uh, interviewed many of the ones that, um, that came back and uh, there weren't that many few, and they the different battles, and at the end, more important, is it has, this is very interesting, it tells you the number of fighting men that were there at the beginning of the Chosen, and the number that came back. There were 2,000 and only 200 came back, okay? So my brother was one of the ones that did not come back. So your brother is still missing in action. Yes, he is. And you will love to have his remain back. And that's why the Americans and Korean governments are working so hard. Do you know anything about Korea? Yes. Where he fought for? Tell yes, me about I it. did. I have, um, the, um, I'll say the government has a program. It's called um, uh, Revisit Program. Revisit Program. Thank you. And it's revisit, and I've been there, and I've visited Korea, and I've been to Seoul, Incheon, and I visit the uh, memorials, and uh, and it gives me goose pimples because I just think of the country and what happened there. My brother's still there, and it's it's it, it just it's it's hmm. I, mean, I guess it's it hurts me to see that ah uh, he gave his life, he's still there, and I can't find him. I would be a very I would think uh, it would be uh, before I would die, because I'm the last one in the family, to actually re receive his remains and uh, let him be here with me in El Paso. And you've done uh, this, what you have done in the last 64 years is just amazing to be on the top of the world. So my brother's sacrifice and our all the, all the other sacrifices was sure worth it, Delta. Thank you very much for recognizing and uh, keep us you know informed and we appreciate everything you do for us thank you very much ben for sharing your brother's uh, story and you are so passionate about the possibility for the return of your brother's remain we will pray together and we hope that you can s put a closure on his whole service on behalf of korean nation we thank you Thank you. Your brother. Yes, thank you.